Welcome to On the Edge with Abram Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot, the place. Let me show you. <laughs> right here. When the conversation is pointed, the guests are super sharp and the responses are never dull. Are you a baby boomer that's overweight and you can't get your head around it? You're talking to me. Okay, I struggle with it. I know consistency is my problem because it's not about eating good and cooking. Sister can do all of that. But it is maintaining it, uh, watching your weight. Everyone in my family is a diabetic. Bless their hearts. I'm trying to dodge that bullet. High blood pressure because folks are stressed out. But we got a winner here. Oh, yes. All the way from, I got to make sure. I always want to say you're in Virginia, but I know you're in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful Deborah Spears. She's a former registered nurse. She's a military spouse turned coach and health and wellness enthusiast. She's going to talk to us about reading labels, how to properly read them, how we can reverse some of the effects of type 2 diabetes, uh, how to reduce our blood pressure. And if y'all was looking as thin and fine as she is, uh, you wouldn't have no problem because she's got it under control. So we're going to talk about diet and exercise. Brains, help me welcome to the edge, Deborah Spears. How are you? Hi, thank you so much, April, for that warm, wonderful welcome. I'm so excited and happy to be here with you today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot, she's a podcaster too. So all this information we're going to provide also. So we're going to talk about her show, but also so that you'll be able to download this and listen to it while you're at the gym so you can really get your head around it. Deborah, tell my brains a little bit about you and your experience as a nurse. Absolutely. I would love to. Thank you so much, April. Well, I am a retired registered nurse, but I have been a registered nurse for more than 30 years, a military spouse and also a registered nurse. So wow. you can pretty much guess that I've seen everything <laughs> in that time. And I've worked everywhere. And so many patients that I've had that have just stuck with my heart. And I started out in the business of healthcare, wanting to help people. And that's still where I am. It's just the experiences have been so um, heart-wrenching that um, you want to do something <coughs> to prevent. I actually worked with the treatment of uh, their uh, blood people with high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, everything, uh, and, and all the other things around it. Wow. But what I realized was that was the preventable diseases that we were trying to treat after the fact. And I want to get to the prevention of the preventable diseases. So my heart really goes to trying to reverse things that can be reversed and catch those things that don't even have to happen before they happen. And most of it is lifestyle and diet. So my experience has not been just one aha moment. It's just been accumulation of patient after patient and struggle after struggle. And you know that the struggles are directly related to lifestyles that could have been prevented if they were better educated on the beginning and also had the support that was needed to get you to where you needed to be. Because I wanna talk about the business of healthcare and the marketing, and that's the problem that got, everybody, got us all sort of stuck here. We're marketed with things that make us sick, and then we're marketed with things that we need to treat the things that made us sick. That's what I learned. Well, people are not big business, and I tell brains that all the time. You know, they're, they have developing, because I work with some leading uh, edge, cutting edge researchers here uh, in San Diego, they've got customized medicine, if you can afford it. So there are things, exactly. you know, I believe, me, because I'm a conspiracy theorist, I believe there's a cure for cancer, there's a cure for AIDS, all of that. And I believe that a lot of things that we ingest, the water, uh, we weren't made to eat meat, even though I do eat meat, but you know, that's not how our bodies were designed and how we eliminate and the time of day that we eat. All of that plays in the conjunction. Am I right or wrong? Yes, you're absolutely right. And large portions. So if there were smaller portions or uh, less frequently consumed because our ancestors weren't able to eat as much as we eat now because right. they had to go hunt and do the work to get the food. So we don't have to do the work to get it and we have it in abundance. And so those are the, the problems that, but the business of healthcare is what got us here. We got, we're in the business of selling people things. Think about sugar. Sugar is an addictive substance that is in 
everything. And it's connected with heart disease. It's connected with diabetes. And by the way, the cardiovascular diseases is the number one leading cause of death. And so, but sugar is in everything. And if we go back in time, we know that sugar comes in a sugar cane. And there be these big log canes that you have to gnaw on and chew on for a long time just to get a small amount of sugar. But they figured out how to squeeze that sugar out of those canes and pack it so you can get six teaspoons in one uh, bottle of something in no time flat. And that's where the diabetes comes in. And the baby boomers are so special because all of the illnesses hit you when you get to the baby boomer age because you've been consuming all of that stuff for in your 20s and 30s. And then when you get to 40s and 50s and 60s, it's all piled up. And time, when I was in China, you know what they call it sugar? Sweet poison. Yeah. It's, it's, said, it's, oh, it's, would you like some sweet poison? And I'm like, what are they talking about? Ah, the sugar. You Americans just love the sugar. The sugar. sodas and the drinks and all that. But Deborah, how, how do we get away from it? Number one, you have to change your palate. You know, I do that. I try to incorporate different things and use more, um, you know, even uh, agaves and honey. That's full of sugar, too. Yeah. Natural honey, natural sugars that are in fruits and vegetables. How do we adjust our palate to move away from sugar? Yes, it's a learning process. It's almost equal to in another drug. That's why I say sugar is a drug. You, you have to gradually work your way into eating the natural, eating the fruits, and eating the vegetables, which also has some sugar in it, and taking yourself away from anything that has added sugar. And everything almost has it. So you have to look for the ones that have the least amount. And I always say when it comes to packaging and processed foods, less is more. So if you're trying to figure out how much sugar to consume in a day and how much not, if it's an apple or fruit, no processing involved so that it has very little sugar if it's a candy bar and it's wrapped in something it was a lot of processing and it has a lot of sugar in it and i'll tell you just one real quick story about a patient i had and she's not an anomaly it's a it's a pattern but she was a diabetic a brittle diabetic and she was a baby boomer and she's since passed on but she was uh constantly in and out of the hospital so she was constantly we were constantly adjusting her insulin we were i mean i made home visits to her she was losing her vision we had to prepare insulin syringes leave them in the refrigerator because she couldn't see anymore all of this happened but she was hoarding sugar it was su such an addiction that when she came in to have the her, she had to have her foot amputated and that's directly linked to the sugar because once the gangrene sets in that's what has to go and when she came in and I went into her room, prep work for the next day surgery, and she has candy bars hidden under some other things in her drawer. Not because she's just a bad person. She was a sweetheart of a person. It was because she was addicted to the sugar and she couldn't stop. So we got to get to the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem is that we're marketed this stuff. We know that it's going to make people addicted to the stuff. Just like there was research decades before they started marketing us on buying foods that are fat free. When we know those foods are packed with sugar, they knew those foods were not going to make you lean, lose weight. They knew that because it was the sugar that's putting the weight on and it was an addictive substance. So you're going to buy more. So the manufacturers of those sugar, sugar is a multi-billion dollar, tr trillion dollar industry. So people are going to spend money on that. And people don't realize this either, that the sugar is being genetically modified, okay? And that's how it's grown with these pesticides and steroids. So you get in a combination of a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, that, it, it's very interesting that, you know, you talk about how food is packaging. You know, again, here we go. Fat-free sugar-free, gluten-free, uh, organic. Marketing. You know that? Really, how do you know that unless you've done it yourself? You know, you go to these specialty stores, you pay an absorbent amount extra for organic this or organic that. How do you know it don't have some pesticides on it just because they did that and it's because it's at a particular store? What are, and we're going to go into food labeling because I really want to learn a little bit about that and you're going to talk about that uh, in just a second. But how do we start selecting our food? Even if you eat meat, 
You know, I go to the, the butcher shop, uh, you know, or I go to the, the Asian store and get fresh fish because the salmon is tainted. Everything is tainted. The best thing to do is the least process. That's the safest way. And you're not going to get 100% because you're marketing with these things. People are in business to make money and they need a massive amount of people to spend it. If you give hundreds and thousands of people to buy this product and you know that it's not exactly what the labels, because I always tell people when we read labels, don't read the front of the label, read the back, fine print, small. And if the first three ingredients are sugar, it's too much. And that's it. And if you buy a product and it says zero calories, and then you read the ingredients and somewhere in it, it says sugar, you're being lied to, but it's sort of like a legal lie because they don't have to register the calories unless it's more than half a calorie per serving. So they put on the package that it has 16 servings and then zero calories per servings. But if you eat half the package, you ate eight servings, so you probably got a half a calorie from me, so you got four uh, grams of sugar, and you didn't know it. That's big if you're a diabetic, because diabetics buy those things because they think they're doing the right thing, especially if it tastes like it's still a little bit sweet, and that's what they want because they crave that. They literally crave it. And so the packaging is key, understanding what you're reading on the packaging. If you buy something, I, I don't have one of the zero calories that actually has something in it, but uh, some of the uh, sugar substitute things that say zero calories per serving and one little piece is a serving and you know you put three or four in there. The, F, the food and drug reg regulations do not require you to list the calories unless it's more than a half a calorie. So all they do is cut down the portion size, knowing that when you buy a package, who eats one bag of, who eats a whole bag of microwave popcorn? Most everybody. Yeah. But the label will say it's 100 calories per serving. But if you read in the fine print on the back, it'll say each bag has five servings. So you really had 500 um, right, right, uh, right, right. One little bag of popcorn. Because yeah. I was like that when I was addicted to soda, girl. I'm so glad I got off that thing. Uh, you know, soda will blow you way up. And when I got off of it, I said, you know what? I need something to drink. So I started making fresh lemonades. And, you know, if I have to have something sweet, I went to make some Kool Aid one time. I looked at the back of the package. I didn't understand nothing. Else. I don't. Yes. I don't know what ingredients it was. Yes. Said, so I started doing that, but then the sugar, but then I can control the amount of sugar that I put when I make my own beverage. But the, uh, you know, the inflammation and the, the salsa water, you really get bloated and you are addicted to it. My mother, bless her heart. She's 89 years old. Girl, we got to count the cookies. She's on uh, ice cream bars now. And I look at it and I say, well, you know, she's 89. It's all about care. It's not about cure. But we have to manage that because, again, her eyesight, she's a diabetic. Her eyesight is being affected. Uh, you know, it works on your kidneys, your internal organs, all of that. Can you grab a label? And I'm going to grab a label off of a particular product. We're going to cover up what the products are because okay. we don't want no drama. You, you uh, want to show me your label first and tell me what you want to Talk about what you so, have. All right, so mine says uh, nutrition facts, a serving size, four cookies per serving container, about five. So that's saying there's about 20 cookies in here. Yes. So it says 28 grams slash one ounce. So what is that saying to me? If I eat four cookies, that's one serving. That's 130 calories, correct? Yes. That's what it says on here. Yes. But if I decide to have eight, cookies, you know, two little trays, then I've consumed 260. I just doubled my intake. Yes. But more important than that, on that label, I want you to look at the sodium and the sugar. Because okay. we focus a lot on calories, but I want people to pay attention to the sodium and the sugar. If you, if you, if that cookie package says how many grams of sodium is 90 in? megagrams or mg, 90 mg, 4%. 90 grams of sugar, of sodium. Sodium, yes. In, in four or in one. See, that's where you get confused. So yeah. it's, ah, that's yes. the trickery. Yes. So that's and, 90 and each cookie. That's correct. Now, how many grams of sugar? Uh, 13 grams. 13 grams of sugar. 
and that's a lot of sugar if you eat four of them or if you eat eight of them. Here's the thing, your, your body, and that's not the healthy sugar. That's not fruit <laughs> or vegetables. That's cane sugar. That's cane sugar. And if you want to avoid becoming a diabetic, and the, the, what I tell people is if you want to avoid type 2 diabetes, to eat like you're a type 2 diabetic. Now, a type 2 diabetic should not be eating eight or four of those cookies. Wow. The thing about it is it's, a, it's addictive. So you, it's like you cannot just eat a few of them. So it's better not to have them. Here's what I tell my pay, people and what I used to tell my patients. Don't buy it, if it and put it in your refrigerator and have it at home. Only have those things as treats when you dine out. When you go out, when you go take the kids or you go into the movies or something, every now and then you can pick up something that they ate while they were out. But if it's in the house, it's every day. And it cannot be every day if you want to be a healthy baby boomer. And I also talk to people that are younger than baby boomers and try to get them to understand it doesn't matter if you don't feel sick right now. It doesn't matter if your labs are good right now. If you're keeping those things in your refrigerator and you're eating them every night, when you reach the baby boomer age, that's when it's going to show up as type 2 diabetes. So the best thing to do is treat it like a drug. Don't have it in the house. Just don't have it in the house. Oh, the my packaging God. was the packaging is designed to trick you. And I have to go back because you mentioned gluten free. And I had a young lady who her 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 partner, he um likes gummy bears and he wanted to argue the case that the package said they were gluten free. Well, they're loaded with sugar. So it does not matter if it says gluten free, if it's loaded with sugar because it's the sugar that's, the, that's doing you the harm. So don't pay so much attention to the front of the label because they're gonna stamp something across there to get you to pick up and buy it. And one of the favorite things they like to do is tell you it's sugar-free or it's gluten-free or it's fat-free. If you turn the label over and you see the uh, things like sugar listed first, or if you see a lot of late names in the label that you can't pronounce, right. you need to put it back well, and go over to, Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. What is gluten? Because there was maybe three, four, no, I'll say maybe five years ago. Nobody knew what gluten was, but I think I am allergic to it because I eat at certain places. Girl, I feel like somebody done ran me with an air hose. I'm just all bloated and, and this kind of stuff. And it's crazy. Yeah, what is it, gluten? Yeah, it's just marketing. It's just, it's just something to make you think you're, uh, uh, being healthy by taking this out of your diet, but it's a process. It's a processing piece that they, that's, you know, it's not in natural foods. You have to use it to make foods do certain things like make, change the texture, make them sticky or whatever. And for a lot of people, it has a negative effect on your body, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not something that you should be, you should be concentrating on looking for labels that you can understand that just have food in it. You know what's in it. It just says nuts and apples. And I tell people, don't be afraid of nuts and fruit. Eat nuts and fruit because that, yes, nuts have fat in it, but they're healthy. They have protein and it's a healthy carbohydrate. So just eat things that you can recognize and don't pick up the things. So if your kids um, want to eat fruit or they want to eat snacks, buy fruit for them. Buy nuts for them. Don't buy packaged candy. Don't care. Don't pay attention to what's on the label. Go to the produce section in the supermarket. Right. And, and, and shop there. They, kids will adapt to what the others are doing because I have people tell me when I go in the refrigerator and say, well, you shouldn't have this. You no, know, you can't have that. And they will say, it's not for me. It's for the kids. <laughs> the kids, the kids right. shouldn't eat either. But even if that were true, and I'm not sure if you're, you're totally telling the truth, but if it is, the kids shouldn't be eating it because they're going to pick up what you like. If you pick up fruit, and vegetables, that's what they're going to start eating because they're around you. Let me ask you another question. Okay, so I'm looking on this label, and it says fats, saturated fat, trans fat, and then it says uh, dietary fibers, less than one gram. Tell me about these fats that are in here. Well, okay. So fat is not your enemy. You can actually be lean and eat fat. You actually need fat. Your body needs fat. 
-hmm. And the thing is, you don't have enough fat. You're going to crave more food because the fat makes you feel satisfied and you need that for your energy and everything. But they're good and they're bad. So those saturated fats, which usually come from the animal products, are not the ones that you want to have large concentration amounts of. But then when you look at processed packaged foods, some of these fats have been chemically modified. And so if they're monounsaturated and all these other things, that's, those are the labels that you want to look for and try to um, steer away from and just eat the fats that are like olive oil, um, coconut oil, anything that you pick the package up and that's the only thing that's in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, then, then that's where you should, that's what you should go with. But meat will have a lot of saturated fats in it, bacons and steaks and all the other things. And those are the things that are not healthy for your heart in large quantities. Mm -hmm. I tried this because I, I don't eat meat. I try to tell people I'm not telling you not to eat meat because if that's what you love to do, then that's what you do. But it has to be in moderation. It has to be a balance. Mm -hmm. You have, you can't just consume that. And I know people who do these various diets where they just consume meat and they're bodybuilders and all of that. But if you're in your 20s and 30s and doing that, you're not going to look like you're sick. But if you continue to do that, by the time you reach baby boomer age, you're going to be sick mm -hmm. because it, your body is not made to sustain that for long, long term. That's why I, heart is I looked in the animal kingdom. I love to go to the zoo, going to the zoo tonight, actually. And the strongest animals are vegetarians. The yeah. silverback gorilla is absolutely striking. Fur, there's no holes in it. Doesn't look like he has fleas. He could take you and toss you clear across the street. Mm -hmm. Elephants, mm -hmm. those animals do not consume meat. Mm -hmm. So for people to really believe that all of your protein comes from meat, yeah. I don't know. I think that that's a misnomer. Can you speak to that? Well, pro it's absolutely a misnomer because you can get all the protein you need just without eating any meat at all. And I have proof of that. But uh, the protein is in all of the beans and lentils that we consume and in just about everything else, too, because the food, the, the, the nutrients that um, you're getting from eating the protein from animal prep is not any better and maybe sometimes worse because the protein that you get in a non-animal is not accompanied with saturated fats. Mm -hmm. So We're people need to understand that pro you can get all of the protein <laughs> <laughs> and steroids, all the yeah, they don't have that. Yeah, yeah, and and also um, B uh, B twelve. I mean B twelve is one of the things that people who eat meat will. Um, suggest that you don't get if you don't eat meat but that's also not true because the b12 is not actually from the animal it's from the vegetables the grass that the animals consume mm -hmm. so you can actually get foods that are fortified with b12 and have the same um healthy b12 in your body when you're when you have your lab work done uh, when you see your doctor you can be a vegetarian and be perfectly healthy and fine, not eating any meat. Now, some people are vegetarians and some people are vegan, and then there's plant-based, but all of, none of them uh, have to have any meat at all, although the vegetarians do consume dairy products, and there are also pescetarians who consume fish. And all of those um, have their place, um, and people will argue their position for all of them. But if you go all the way over to the meat eating, you have to do that in moderation because you make up the mass amount of people that end up with cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that, that's the rub that nobody actually really says. If you did a research, you can Google it. If you did a research on the people who have cardiovascular diseases, and that's again, the number one cause of death, they are people who are meat eaters. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them um, have a lot of saturated fat in their diet. And the other rub to that is colon cancer. I've been uh, caring for patients for 30 years and I've had patients, tons of patients with cancer, the colon cancer. I have never had one person who has had colon cancer tell me that that cancer came from a vegetable or I don't eat any meat. 
Yeah. I've never had one. I am not saying anything uh, negative against meat if that's what you do. I'm only just saying my experience has been, that has been my experience. Yeah. Well, I talked to my mother and I said, I don't know how many chickens is in the world. Okay, chicken, 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 chicken. It's not that many chickens, <laughs> you know? So I don't know what, what this is that people are eating. Uh, I have been going to some vegan restaurants. And at first I was a little apprehensive. I said, oh God, this is going to taste like straw, but it is delicious. Yeah. And when they say that this is plant-based, you know, I'll, what plant is just soy? What other plants can make up a texture that tastes like well, a steak or, or tastes well, like a... Well, uh, well plant-based you know. and vegan are pretty much the same. The, the, the only difference is people um, come up with these phrases in terms to throw people off and confuse them. Plant-based and vegan are almost the same. The only difference is a true a vegan is someone who that has nothing attached to animal. That means they won't wear a fur coat. They won't have leather in their house. None of that. That's the no, vegan. plates, girl. I had a girlfriend that came over here. She was vegan. She brought her own plate. I was like, really? Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> yeah, so they, they are really the vegan. So plant based is kind of that, but they're not at that point where they're giving away their favorite, you know, leather jacket. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I want to ask you another question uh, a little bit about supplements and vitamins you did a great uh presentation on one of your podcasts and you uploaded to youtube's about that tell us a little bit about these supplements i get my test results back and i'm always having a challenge with that vitamin d but then i'll take a vitamin d supplement and get acid reflex how do you, how do you supplement that with food or or what's your thoughts behind additional supplements so look for foods that are fortified with the vitamins. Get, try to get your vitamins in your food. First of all, if you're challenged with not having enough vitamins and you need a supplement, odds are you don't eat enough fruits and vegetables because most of them are packed with vitamins, mm. that includes, including beans and lentils. So that's where you want to get your first source of vitamins. And the biggest challenge I have with people in vitamins is they think more is good, means I can just take one it says a uh, thousand milligrams of something and I'll be good even though I'm eating um, a Snickers bar. And that's not how it works. First, your body will only absorb so much at one time. So if you buy a thousand milligrams of something, uh, for example, a C, and your body can only absorb 300, it's only gonna absorb 300 and the other 700 is going to waste. <laughs> mm. Uh, to put it mildly. And so that's for the water-soluble vitamins. But there are also fat-soluble vitamins that you buy. And if you buy those vitamins in large dosage, you could actually be doing your body harm because they will store in your body and then build up. And then they could do damage to vital organs. Vital organs. So I always tell people, get your vitamins in your food. Even D, you can find it, it's, it's added to, it's in your milk and everything. Not to mention if you just go outside and take a walk for 20 minutes, you have all the D uh, that you need for any um, given day. But I hear people talk about, I'm taking, I, I see it on social media, I'm taking vitamins, or what vitamins should I take to get my nails to grow? What vitamins should I take for my skin to clear up or something like that? And all these vitamins are sold to people making them believe that they work. And the only th the problem is you're not eating a healthy diet. If you're eating a healthy diet, all of those vitamins are in the food and you won't need a supplement. But if, you're all, but if dinner is a pizza and lunch is a candy bar, then you're gonna need something to supplement that. But that is not gonna work long term because you're doing that while you're young. After you get older and you're doing that, now you're taking a statin for your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking a blood pressure medicine. Now you're taking something for diabetes because you ate whatever you wanted, but you took a supplement, a vitamin. So vitamins are not the end of, as a matter of fact, vitamin is a, a big business as well. They make all these supplements. There's no FDA. FDA does not evaluate them for the efficacy or for the amount that's in it. So the label says it's 1,000 milligrams. You pay more for that bottle than for 300 milligram bottle. And you don't know that there's 1,000 in there. That's one. And two, when you take it, your body is probably not absorbing all of it at that one time anyway, because it's only going to absorb it so much at a time if it's a water-soluble, like a C or a D. 
fat soluble vitamins like A and E, those, those vitamins store up in your body and that's not a good thing. Well, it's not a good thing. And I want to touch on this really quick before we go into your podcast and book, but I want to talk about high blood pressure and diabetes. You know, I mean, it's like tattooed on ethnic people's back, you know, Native Americans. They don't talk about Native Americans anymore, um, but that's my heritage. Um, Native Americans, African American, Hispanics going through the roof. Give us some direction, some ideas on how we can get our head around that and try to reverse some of the causes of type 2 diabetes. Absolutely. And even Caucasian, that's, it, it's, it's a misnomer that it's one culture. It really is a lifestyle. So if you're eating unhealthy, whatever your uh, background is, and it's not so much genetic as it is the foods that you're eating. So oftentimes you will hear, and I've heard it because I've been in practice for a while, and what, you, know, you go see the doctor and they'll say, well, what's in your family or what's your family? It's not necessarily a gene, but people leave the doctor's office with that mindset that because my, well, I did tell him that my grandmother had diabetes, but no, it's because your grandmother loved pecan pie and now you love pecan pie. That's the message I want people to get. So if you change that love for pecan pie to a fruit salad or something, then you problem solved. It's not like in your blood. And it doesn't, the, the ethnicity is about the lifestyle. If, if everybody's making macaroni and cheese all the time, that's a lot of carbohydrates. Right. And so if that's the, the staple for every meal or, or sweet potato yams with a lot of marshmallows, just eat the sweet potato. If you just eat the sweet potato, it's actually sweet. That's where it got the name. Right. And you don't have to add the syrup, the sugar, the marshmallows, and, and all those other things. So it's that. It's the food that we're consuming that's causing these diseases, and people are associating them with, and they're giving themselves, uh, they're beating themselves up because they think it's just, it's just going to happen. I just have to get used to having to take insulin. No, if your mom took insulin, you don't have to take insulin. You just have to watch what she did and don't do that. You have to learn from her that this is not the best way. I need to do it this way. And even though I'm just in 20s and 30s, and I said, again, I talked about baby boomers, but if I'm in my 20s and 30s and my mom is a baby boomer and she's sick and I think, well, it's coming for me soon, it's not unless you are still consuming um, the same way she does. If you take candy bars and put them in your office desk because you know you're not going to be have time to go take a lunch break and that's what you do while you're still working over time when you get older you're going to feel the effects of that so it's the it's and certain cultures do cook differently that's true so that's where we got the you know native americans they cook differently African Americans, they cook differently and they cook in large portions and we put a lot of food in the refrigerator, even though the leftovers from dinner may turn out to be a nighttime snack. And we have this thing about having dessert and you don't have to have dessert every day. I love the fact that when I grew up, we didn't have a lot because dessert was Sunday. You know, Sunday was church and Sunday was dessert. The rest of the week, you know, get over it. <laughs> you right, know? right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about your circadian rhythm? Okay, that I'm a victim of that as well. So uh, your body should have those 12 hours of fasting. You know, um, I've been reading a great book, uh, Fit for Life, and it is telling me, you know, that you should have some fruit you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes before you eat. You get a lot of your water. You don't have to drink a gallon of water. You can get a lot of water from fruits and vegetables, but also the timing of when you eat. So me, I'm on a world clock. I'm dealing with people all over the world. I'm getting up at two o'clock and I'm figuring, no, I'll say I'm at 10 o'clock. And then it's about two o'clock. Well, my two o'clock in the morning could be two o'clock in the afternoon. It's time for a snack. It's not time for a snack, April. You should be sleeping. That's when the body repairs itself. That's when your body sets itself up to eliminate. Elimination is very uh, uh, important because you're only going to get rid of fat three ways, through sweat, through bowel, or through urination. Yes. And so and you've got to be able to do that. So tell us a little bit about timing your food and how we should be doing that. And so I like 12 hours at least. But it's so important for people to understand the why, because when you talk about things and, and, and then everybody gets challenged with it and then they stop and they go, okay, but I work out so I really don't have to. It's important to understand that our body ages 
based on our lifestyle. And so we need a downtime where we're not feeding it food at least as long as the time that we're feeding it food. Because when we're not feeding it food, the aging slows. And when we're feeding it with food, it speeds up. So if you remember those things, it's easier to stick to the 12 and 12 uh, or 10 and 14, but the, the period where you're not eating should be at least equal to the period when you're eating every single day to give yourself that downtime. And then if you are a, a meat eater, you need to drink more water than a person that's just a vegetarian and not a vegetarian that eats candy because we have to clarify that people think they're vegetarian, that they're healthy automatically. But if your version of a vegetarian means you just don't eat meat, but you eat everything else. So if Oreo cookies is your go-to and you call yourself vegetarian, that's not it. It, it needs to be vegetables and fruit in the way mother nature made them. That's how you get, that's the healthy piece of it that people don't understand. Oh yeah, because I done seen some nice plump vegetarians. It's a, <laughs> okay. They on, they on that sugar and that, that carbohydrate. Carbohydrates, that's another one of my enemies. Love me some bread. Pasta, me and my daughter went to a restaurant. I'm not going to rate the restaurant. But everything was cheese. It was so much cheese. We looked at each other. We said, okay, we're going to split this meal. And this is not going to be our favorite go-to restaurant anymore. Yeah. It was yeah. just way too much cheese. But people don't understand that you can ask for the same meal and ask them without cheese or with light cheese. And I mean, I do it all the time. You have to be able to, as a matter of fact, the restaurants are wanting to accommodate you because they want your business. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, go to a restaurant where they always serve French fries, I ask, what else do you have? Do you have um, steamed broccoli? Do you have uh, sauteed spinach? They always have something else, always. It has never come to me where, oh no, that's the only, that's the only way we, we only serve that. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask for it, light cheese or no cheese or put whatever the sauce is, don't put it on the food, put it on the side mm -hmm. so I can just take a teaspoon out and put it on my food as I'm eating. You have to ask for that. Open face sandwich when you get a, a a big sandwich of whatever, whether it's a vegetarian, because you can get a vegetarian sandwich that's packed with carbohydrates and stuff too. But if you get open face, that means you get a piece of bread at the bottom, but not on the top. Uh, and then extra vegetables. Uh, there are tons of options. You just have to ask for them. People don't think to ask for them and ask for them for your kids. And then if you're dining out with other people, it rubs off. Because right. everybody else was sitting at the table and didn't think about it. And then when you ordered it, they want that. I can't tell you how many times I've been someplace where you get up to the front of the line and all of the vegetarian or vegan meals are gone. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I know this room was not filled with all mm -hmm. vegetarian and vegans. Everybody just wanted to try it. <laughs> you know? So people aren't interested. You just have to get them interested. But people have to understand that eating junk food is bad whichever one of those diets you pick. So you can't give yourself a pat on the back because you don't eat meat if in fact you have a lot of junk food. You're actually doing yourself more harm because those are the things that are gonna to lead to the diabetes right. down the road. Yeah. And regular elimination. I, can, I can't tell you how many women say that they don't eliminate every day. You know, I was reading that you should have a bowel movement at least two, three times a day. You need to get that stuff out of your system. Well, depending on how much you eat and what you eat, at least every day. But I, I, one, sugar is constipating. And so is beef and meat. I should have said beef, meat. And so those are the, if you eat a large amount of those, you're not going to be as regular as somebody who is actually a vegetarian, plant-based or vegan who actually understands what that means and knows that every time you eat something, it's a fruit and a vegetable involved somewhere. Then the regularity is just on autopilot. And, you know, not to be too graphic, but people who have to go in the bathroom and sit for a long time to wait, there's something wrong with your diet. Right. right. Yeah. There's or the wrong. smell. The, 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 you know, there's places you can go and I tell you it is horrible. But I started juicing and juicing my husband and juicing my mother. Girl, I ain't had to really to worry about that because they can go to the bathroom and you don't even know that they're there. You can tell a d distinct difference 
from somebody that is rotting from the inside. Let's switch reels and talk a little bit about exercise for the baby boomers because, you know, they got hip dysplasia, their back is hurting, their knees is hurting, their ankles are swelling. Give us some suggestions on what type of exercise, lightweight exercise that we can do, that we can enjoy. I say mix it up. You know, you don't always have to do yoga. You don't always have to play tennis. You could just turn on some music and get down with the OJs, <laughs> you know, and work up a sweat. The main, thing, the main thing is to sweat for you. And everybody's going to reach that point and sweat at a different level, depending on where you are. But the ailments that you mentioned are almost always secondary to the weight. So when you find somebody that's struggling with knee problems and back problems and all of that, because you've been carrying around a lot of excess weight on your body for a long period of time. But keep in mind that you can't do everything that you did when you were 20 and 30, when you're a baby boomer. When I run, there's always, always a 20 or 30 year old that runs sprints past me. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, cool, let's keep it up. But you, mm -hmm. that, that, don't compare yourself to that person. Don't, come, don't watch these YouTube videos where these 25-year-olds um, that are showing you their bodies and telling you, uh, you know, this is the product that you take to it. Because if you're 55, that is not you. You want to you wanna send your daughter to, to, to match up with that person. But your body has changed over time. We were intended to be that way. So you need to, I always tell people we're baby boomers and we need to take baby steps especially if you've been out of the game for a while. You just step in and do what you can, and you will realize that every day you can do a little more. If you do two push-ups every day, one day you're gonna be able to do three, just every day. If you take a walk and it's just a quarter of a mile, one day you're gonna be able to take a half a mile. Okay. So baby steps for baby boomers. Don't compare yourself to other people. Just do the best that you can and you're gonna watch your body change. But you can't do it unless you have the diet right. Because our body, it is 80% the way you eat. 20% of that is the exercise. 80, remember, 80-20, always apply that 80-20 rule. So if you're just um, eating anything and everything, and you're a baby boomer, and you figure if you go out and take a walk, you're gonna be okay. No, the walk should motivate you to do better in the kitchen. And the biggest thing about our kitchens being our favorite room in the house, we need to find another favorite room in the house. <laughs> it should not be your favorite room in the house right. because it, the food is supposed to nourish your body. We're not supposed to be living to eat. The food is supposed to nourish your body. You need to get in there and get what you need and then move on. So right. that's the, the best way to sustain aging healthy right. is the and what I've started to do, too, is, you know, I'm a woman of a particular age, and I have a personal summer. Uh, them hot flashes can be cold-blooded. I started keeping a food journal. And I said, you know what? Let me see what I'm eating, and how long does it take before I have a reaction? Yes. And what type of reaction do I have? Yes. And what, what happens if I don't have a coffee or a cookie or a piece of chocolate? What and it made the world of difference. Even it made the world, flash. the world of difference. I mean, you know, you people can still, you know, do whatever it is as far as what their doctor rec recommends, hormone replacement therapy, or, or whatever that is. But basically, just kind of getting that hot flash off you. Keep yes. a food journal and yes. do it for about four or five days. Write down every single thing. I mean, from a piece of gum to a mint to water, everything that you put inside of your body. I did that one day, Deborah. I did it for um, one day. Girl, I was mortified. I had put 45 items in my mouth. 45, yes, brains, I'm just self-disclosing. I was like, who does this? It was crazy. The next day, oh, it was 20, okay? And the next day, it was 15. Matter of fact, I need to go back and do that again. Because yeah. it, was, it was a snapshot. Of re you don't think about it. Oh, I'm just doing this. I'm just doing this. This is just like a garbage disposal. And, it, yeah. you know, you're going to end up being the waste. And pay attention to what those 45 items are. Yes. 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 So that they're highly concentrated in sugar. And carbohydrates, people need to recognize that breads, and the, those things convert to sugar in your body. So the macaroni and cheese, those things convert to sugar in your body. So it's still sugar. 
So you need to know how much sugar are you putting in your body? And then if you're not feeling well one day, look back for the past 24 hours and ask yourself, what did I have to eat? Right. What right. did I have to eat? And brains learn to cook. All this stuff is processed, you know, in these restaurants. How you think you get your burger in a, a minute and a half, or, you know, three minutes, all that kind of stuff. This stuff is already pre prepared and you don't know what happens that's why you got to pray over your food too you got to pray for the cook the sacrifice the, the preservatives all of that kind of stuff Deborah, let's fast forward to your podcast i want my brains to definitely know about your podcast and your book and what you're doing in the world and how we can stay connected to you absolutely so i have a podcast i'm on most of the channels spotify and all, all the other um Apple, uh, iTunes, etc., and it's a holistic, healthy podcast that I do every once a week uh, on Friday mornings. And um, I generally talk to baby boomers, but it's broader than that because baby boomers were once not baby boomers, and they're actually going to be old, getting older. So I want people to extend that to understand that you need to include um, what you do before you reach that age where you want to age healthy. In order to do that, you need to start younger. So my podcast is um, all about keeping us healthy. And I like to share some of the experiences I've had with patients, as well as some of the experiences I've had with clients who have um, lost a phenomenal amount of weight working with me. Well, you know what? Thank you so much. And you are lean and mean and you are looking gorgeous. You don't have to tell nobody that you are a baby boomer. Just tell them you a boomer. (laughs) (laughs) And thank you so much. I love your smile and your energy. I want my brains to tune into you. Uh, I'm going to put all of your information down there. We're going to run this all over the planet. Please know, men, go to the doctor. Absolutely. Take your your health under your own control. Heart disease, I mean, you're just falling out. I know more men that are being uh, subjected to kidney disease and having amputations because they're not doing it. You overwork, you stress. You know, take a mental health day, just relax, barbecue something, uh, and do it and don't put no sauce on it. You know, make it good, make it smoked. Uh, Learn how to eat more vegetables. A friend of mine told me, let's look at your plate. The more color, is on your plate you know the richer that you feel everything doesn't have to be the white pasta the white potatoes you know or the meat make your meat portion a little bit smaller nobody's saying don't eat meat i'm down with a filet mignon i always tell people mother nature intended it that way she made all those foods colorful just to attract you so that you eat right And go through the, the produce department and just observe how many different colors. You might have been using a green bell pepper. Try the yellow. Try the red. All of that has different vitamins, different minerals, uh, juice, okay? Just get you some juice, get you a juicer, and clean out your system because a clean colon is going to be good. We could talk about this forever. Deborah's going to come back because we have to stay on top of this. The world is... Uh, a a tricky place with all these labels and all of this marketing. It's not to keep you well. Okay. It's to keep money in their pockets. And so you have to use your what brain. That's what we do here on the edge. Thank you so much for being with us, Deborah. Uh, Did you tell my brains how to get in contact with you? you Your email address and your podcast and your website. Absolutely. I can, you can find me just by searching DebraSpears.com um, on my webpage, as well as Deborah Spears222 for Instagram and Deborah Spears22 for Facebook. So I am very easy to find uh, and send me an email at wholebodyhealth22 uh, at gmail.com. We don't need everybody to know that you're still 22. <laughs> yeah. no, actually, that's my birthday, but <laughs> well, you are absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. And look at your skin; it's just radiating. And so, again, you are a living example of you know people have to to uh, walk the walk. They can't just talk the talk. And so thank you so much for doing everything that you you do. I love you 110%. Thank you so much for being here on the edge. Come on back anytime, brains. Pay attention. Send this to your friends, okay? Go back and check out other edgy conversations here on the edge. Up those numbers. YouTube, iTunes, Mixcloud, Spotify, all over the planet, okay? All right, brains. I love you. Have a super fantastic day. Be great.